through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Drop it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic, hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 225. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today we're going to give you our DVD rundown for the week of January 29th. Mm -hmm. It is already over. We have finished January, we have. believe it or not. You know, it's kind of amazing to think that one month is already done. But I yeah. guess that means we're just one month closer to uh, Star Trek Into Darkness. So <laughs> let's just leave it at that. You know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can I have upsides, right? Yeah. We're almost, we're almost to the better, better <laughs> movies of the year. Uh, in terms of the rundown this week, we have, you know, I would say a mixed bag of stuff. Not it's too shabby. Not too shabby. It's not I mean, great. At least not... big releases. Yeah. And some of them are packaged pretty nicely. But... Yeah. Uh, a lot of new stuff, though, mm -hmm. starting with probably, I would say, the more interesting one of the week, and that is Seven Psychopaths, mm -hmm. uh, the new film from Martin McDonough, uh, who did In, In Bruges. Bruges. Great yeah. film. Also brought back Colin Farrell mm -hmm. for this one, as well as, you know, Woody Harrelson, Sam Rockwell, yes. Christopher Walken, Tom Waits, all sorts of good people about a kidnapped <laughs> shih tzu. Um, and, and the hijinks that ensue, involve it. Yes. You know... I mean, In Bruges was one of those sort of like, I don't know if you want to call it a cult hit, but it mm. it, it, it garnered an audience yeah. and a, a fandom for Martin McDonough, uh, who, so there was a lot of anticipation for this film. Yes. The film came out, was very well received, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of anticipation, you know, it's good to see it finally coming out. Yes. It comes out on Blu-ray with an ultraviolet copy, you know, DVD as well, sadly, not anything all across the board. Unfortunate. But, you know, it's got a handful of featurettes. Uh, Martin McDonough's Seven Psychopaths, probably covering all the sort of mm -hmm. elements of the film. Uh, the, the locations of the movie, the crazy Very locations. Cool. You have um, the different, uh, one of my favorite featurette names ever, Seven Psycho Cats. <laughs> I don't know what that is. But I if, think, I, if I remember correctly, it's the trailer, the entire trailer done with cats. I I approve of I, that. I believe I've seen this on the internets, and I believe that's what it is. That is fantastic. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but just by the name, I approve of it. Seven Cycle Yes. Yeah. And then, you know, you have some ones like Colin Farrell as Marty, Woody Harrelson as Charlie, you know. Many featurettes, probably. Yeah. You know, it's it's it's... It doesn't have a commentary, unfortunately, mm. which would have been awesome with yeah. at, least him, at least him or some of the cast. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's a decent release, and it's a good film, so, you know, yeah. you got that going for you. I would say at the very least, you know, give it a rent. I would say that's worthwhile. Mm -hmm. If not, if you're a fan of it, buy it. Yeah. But maybe... I'll probably be renting it right here. Maybe someday, you know, Pro Criterion video. will maybe. do a release of his stuff since, you know, he seems to be off to a good uh, start. No sophomore slump here. That's true. Yeah, so... In a uh, much more dramatically uh, negative area, we had Hotel Transylvania come out today Ugh. in a Blu-ray, Blu-ray, or sorry, uh. Blu-ray 3D, Blu-ray DVD, and ultraviolet copy all in one. So you got that going for it. The movie makes me sad. Um, this is Gendy, yeah. was it Tarkovsky? Gendy Tarkovsky. Gendy Tarkovsky. The same guy who did Powerpuff Girls and Samurai Jack. Which I'm a big fan, Samuel yeah. Jack. Samuel Jack is amazing. Um, unfortunately, this is about a hotel of monsters yes. who are voiced by the Adam Sandler crew. Yes. So you can imagine Adam Sandler humor ensuing. Yes. And as we all know, Adam Sandler humor has been so successful in the last number of years with the comedy wonder hits like Jack and Jill. Um. You you joke, but I think a lot of them actually do make a fair amount of money. I know. That's what's so sad about it. This like one there's, probably made a crap ton of money internationally, yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know... Animated films generally do pretty well at, internationally. It was funny, you know, I was... There's a... Forget the editor's name of Fangori. I was talking about, I believe, showing this film to his kids and saying it was one of the best films the best monster films to come out this year because it was the most child friendly. You know, mm. Frank and Weenie, I would say, yeah. is suspect in terms of the child friendliness yes. and stuff like that. Um, which I thought was sort of an interesting, interesting take I, mean, on I it. guess maybe it is more kid friendly and there's something to be said for that. Mm. But, you know, it's got a solid release. It has all the formats together, yeah. it has commentary by Tartofsky mm -hmm. and, you know, the producer and visual effects guy. It has uh, the animated short Good Night, Mr. Foot, that he did that was attached to it in mm. later screenings. Um, it has various progression reels showing, you know, how the film was put together. It Always has, love those. It has Making of. It has, uh, you know, music videos hmm. attached to it. You know, it's it's got a prologue hmm. uh, attached to it. So, you know, it's a very 
decent release in yeah. terms of the release itself. In terms of the film itself, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm, I'm not necessarily. Just go see Paranorman instead. Yeah. Well, there's another one that might yeah. not be as kid friendly necessarily. I thought it was fine, but I'm yeah. not a kid, I guess. Um, I am deep down inside. I'm still a you're, kid. You're definitely sure. Very childish. <laughs> But, you know, I mean, I guess if you're a fan of it or you have kids, yeah. perhaps it's worthwhile. But I, I Or mean, if you ugh, like Adam Sandler humor as a recent. It's got to be maybe. better than Jack and Jill. Let's be real. It's got to be better than it has to, It I think statistically has to be. I think it's statistically impossible for it not to be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Take what uh, you will from yeah. that. It's got all the formats, though. So it's that's true. At least for. solid release. Yeah. Another film from this year, uh, continuing a long-running series, if you want to call it that. We're talking Paranormal Activity 4. This I can't is the, there's already four of these movies. The four, oh, there's one God. a year. It's like Saw's. It's the new Saw. Ugh. Um, this is the fourth chapter in the series, picking up with a, a new family mm-hmm. that has a young kid who brings an unknown presence with them. You know, it's it's not... It's the same directors as the third Paranormal yes. Activity, uh, Ariel Shulman and Henry Joost, who also did Catfish, which is once again in the news. Thank you, Manti Teo. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it's it's not... It lo- the trailer is one of the scariest things I've seen in recent years. Sadly, the film didn't necessarily live up to that no. level, but, you know, it, there's, there is a certain element of creepiness that these films do, yeah, it's do well. And there's a reason people keep going back to see it. And I'm sure there's probably going to be a fifth one coming out <sighs> this year. I, it just, I wish there was more to it. I mean, they have DVD, Blu-ray, digital copy, ultraviolet, all in one. So they got the whole package together. But it was very, very light on special features. You have a recovered files, nearly 30 minutes of footage not shown in theaters. And that's basically it. That's the special feature. They've probably done, already gotten rid of like everything interesting they could say about the paranormal activity probably. franchise by this point. I, you know, I would, I would very much like to hear from the people who are making these films. I mean, I guess maybe it gets rid of some of the illusion that they're found footage or something like that. I don't know. I mean, maybe that's what they're really trying to sell people on still, as if people don't know it's not. But you know, wait, it's not. I know exactly. I didn't just find this. Yeah. So. Special features very weak. I, mm-hmm. I guess there's both the unrated and rated versions of the movie on this. I don't know what could possibly be so unrated that they'd have to cut mm. it out. Like, is the ghost naked or something at some point? Like, do they say some it's language? A level maybe of violence or I don't know. I don't something know. Something happening to a kid that's not know. okay with the MPAA. Don't ask me. I won't. Yeah. No. So that that came out. If Yay. you're a Paranormal Activity <laughs> fan, pick it up. I'm gonna pass on yes. that one. Yes. But Paraf- I'm not gonna judge. Normal activity. Go get Paranorman, as he said. That's the better para some para movie to come mm-hmm. out in the last mm-hmm. year. Finally, this week we're gonna close out by talking about the 25th anniversary collection of Die Hard. Mm-hmm. This is coming out on Blu-ray. You got Die Hard, Die Hard 2, Die, or Die Hard 2, Die Harder, mm-hmm. um, Die Hard with a Vengeance, and Live Free or Die Hard. Appropriately, this is coming out as a collection immediately before the next Die Hard comes yep. out, on. thus rendering itself moot. Yeah, the moment it comes out. It does come with an additional disc called Decoding Die Hard, which has all sorts of special features mm. on it, including Modern Day Hero, which discusses the casting and evolution of, and the legacy of John McClane. Mm. It's got uh, a featurette on Along for the Ride, talking about the sidekicks of who have teamed up with McClane, which I would love some discussion about Reginald Bell Johnson, mm. who rocked it the first couple <laughs> yeah, films. He, he needs to come back. Call of Duty. Right there. Yeah, I mean, he like he hasn't been he hasn't done anything as far as I know since that in fa- uh, Family Matters. So yep. he needs to come back to Die Hard. Like if they brought him back to the Die Hard franchise, I'd be Jay. Yeah, I, I'd be I'd be I'd be so excited about that. Um, they have a feature out about the foes of McLean called Bad to the Bone, and they have a whole bunch of other ones. But then the last one I mention is the right hero for the right time, talking about the influence of Die Hard, hmm. which I would very much like to hear more about because I have long argued that. Die Hard and Terminator 2 are the um, the definitive uh, modern action mm. uh, movies. They set the template for the modern action film. Um, I can agree so with that. So I would very much like 
to your discussion about mm -hmm. that. So, I'm surprised yeah. there's not like a uh, Yippie Kaye Mother Mother Falcon uh, feature in there yeah. so about uh, the TV edits. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. Falcon. Yeah, uh, well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go down that road because that's already a big problem with Live Free or Die Hard. I mean, that film is fine. I, I I don't think it's nearly as bad as a lot of people, but the fact that they toned it down to a PG-13 has has definitely been a problem. They've turned on the franchise. The so. internets are down. Which one, sir? All of them. Yeah. Let's not let's not go there. <laughs> let's not go there. Yeah. Anyway, you I'm know. Spencer baiting. Don't mind. Yeah. Me. Join us next week for our discussion of zombie movies in honor of the release of Warm Bodies. Mm -hmm. And as always, you can find us at MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast, phone number 323-761-9842. We're on iTunes. We're on Blip.tv. We're on Miro. We're on Roku. You can check in and get glue, get some sticker badges, thingies, tweet some stuff, talk to us. Facebook yeah. us, iTunes review us. We love you all. Just yell at us in general. And we'll see you next time.